Agents of field. Come in, agents of field. Can you hear us? NASA calling. Agents of field. Come in, agents of field. Agents of field, you've been off grid for too long. Your absence have left Gardner angry, upset, confused. We need your green fingers now more than ever. Agents of field, are you there? I repeat. Are you there? Target spotted. This is God. One while picking up a signal. No man. We think we may have found them. I repeat, we may have found them. Wait for my signal. Breaking news. We've just received reports. Agents of field have resurfaced. After months of rumors regarding the green-fingered couple, we can now confirm they've set up home in rural Suffolk to lead the good life. If this is true, then the horticultural world is about to look a whole lot greener. Still to come, the last six months has been about digging, building and planting, but finally our kitchen garden is ready for the world to see. To help us get us started on our good life journey, we've been getting advice from the best. Adam Frost and James Alexander Sinclair give us their take on growing your own. And of course we have all the usual suspects in an Agents of Field show. So sit back grab a brew and let us tantalize your green fingers. Agents of Field are back on a new mission. But for those of you who are new to Agents of Field or you've just been wondering where we've been for the last few months, well, we've been on a journey. Uh, last year, after years of working in London, of living in London, Soph and I decided we wanted to live a more sustainable life. We wanted to live the good life so last October, we moved to rural Suffolk and we're now renovating an old house and I've just finished building our kitchen garden. Sat on a quarter of an acre, it faces the southwest. Initially, the garden was in semi-darkness as it was surrounded by half-dead evergreens. Once these were removed, it gave me the blank canvas to try and create something special. From the off, we tried to use locally sourced materials not only to save on travel pollution, but to support local businesses. The garden itself is made up of over 85 various untreated railway sleepers, with five bulk bags of path gravel. However, the path base isn't aggregate. Instead, I've gone with gravel stabilisation grids. The raised bed compost is all from the fantastic peat-free company, Dalefoot Compost. The greenhouse is from a Suffolk-based company, Vitavia, and the shed is from Scott Timber Buildings, a Norfolk-based company. But for me, the icing on the cake is the arch and fence, which was sourced from a Suffolk-based company, Natural Fencing. Whilst the main kitchen garden has a modern look, the fence and arch wraps it up with more of a traditional cottage feel. Over the coming months, we'll fill the borders with various shrubs and plants, so eventually, the fence will be mostly obscured. As we want this garden to be as organic as possible, pesticides isn't an option. So, 
With some of the extra logs I chopped down earlier this year, we've made a haven for bees, bugs and various critters. Bug Metropolis. Built in the kitchen garden flower bed, it's surrounded by all the plants that will support this home for these creatures. From borage to sunflowers. If we give them a safe home, then they should return the favour by pollinating plants and eating the unwanted pests. So that is our brand new kitchen garden and I'm thrilled by it. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's taken us six months to get to this point. A lot has happened. Um, we've had some ups and a few downs. Uh, one of the downs being my dad suddenly, suddenly passed away at Christmas and that basically rocked my world. Um, not only did I lose him, he was my best friend, he was my counsel and he was a great gardener. So everything ground to a halt. Um, January this year I I really didn't know where I was going to garden again. I, I just didn't know what was going on in my life. Um, but slowly, you know, I picked up the trowel, got out there, and day by day, you know, got myself involved with the garden, started building the kitchen garden, and it helped. Um, there's still a healing process going on, but I will say what we've done out there has helped. It's a lovely sense of achievement. I'm only sad my dad is, is not here to see it. He would have loved it, but um, we move forward, we move forward. And he is part of the garden. We have a bench named after him. Dad's bench, obvious. Um, but he is there, he is there. And although it took me longer than I anticipated, um, we're there. The garden is working. The garden is producing crops, producing fruit. And it's just a lovely place to be. What started as a hobby became a passion, has become a career, and now a way of life. So Soph and I are thrilled. You know, we, we, we're trying to do something. We're trying to break the mold. You know, we're trying to put a stamp on things. And, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oi oi, Savaloy, now what do we have here? Well, if it isn't the fruity citrus number, Oriana. Mmm, I like the way that rolls off one's tongue. This is a plant you can always spot in a lineup. Yes, you try keeping this sharp sensation shackled up. And for those that likes variety, this is a cat that swings both ways. An outdoor plant for those sultry summer months and an indoor bedfellow for those long, cold, wintry nights. Now, this is a citrus I want to be fruity with. I say, you know when you've been tangoed. Ding dong. So grow your own is a big part of our lives. And as you can see, there's a lot going on in the garden, but to help me get things going, you know, I read the books, I checked out various blogs, I read various websites, but I felt I need a little bit more advice. So I went to the best. I went to the Grand Jedi Masters and they said this. Do it. No. What's the worst thing that can happen? Um, Is that some seeds that germinate or a, a plant dies? Plants are not puppies. They don't really, it doesn't matter. If, if one dies, you're just checking on the compost heap and it, it goes back into back into that, that, that whole thing. If you uh, worry too much about it, then you will never try. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so the thing is, do not be afraid to fail. All of us, everybody who gardens, you know, no matter how long we've been gardening, whether it's for, for 30 days or 30 years, we all mess up sometimes yeah, yeah, and we all get things wrong and, and you learn from that. And so, 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 so the basic message is just do it. Okay? Don't faff about it. Just do yeah, stuff. Just do it's, it's, it's like when people say, oh, I want to attract wildlife in my garden. Oh, you should just plant something. Plant something. Plant anything. See what That's happens. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. see what happens. Just see, because that's yeah, yeah. the whole joy. It's, it's, it's the idea of just experimenting and seeing how it goes. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. If you just create your dream garden, my advice would be is love it. Look after it. Have the soil. Make sure you put some goodness in year on year. But then just watch it and care for it, you know, watch it through the months, what works well, what doesn't well, start to keep a diary, take a few photographs, because ultimately I think eventually the garden starts to tell you what to do. So, like you didn't know, 
That was Mr. Adam Frost and Mr. James Alexander Sinclair. Two lovely chaps, just a fountain of knowledge there. So thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Hello, and welcome to another soothing episode of Garden Relaxation. Today we join Gardener Aid, who's going to thoughtfully dismantle an old shed. Hello, Aid. Is your mind thoroughly relaxed to take on this task? And I see you have the right tool for the job. Like every show, we illustrate that gardening is calming, therapeutic, and very relaxing. Blokes with tools. We may know diddly squat how to use them, but we sure as hell can make a lot of noise. Before I forget, here are five easy jobs you can be doing in your garden or allotment. As we enter the sultry month of August, crops will be growing quickly. To avoid gluts, try and pick veg like courgettes regularly. That way you're not stressing the plant and the veg won't grow too big. Your crops will be sweet and tender. Dahlias are a gardener's favourite, but remember to cut any spent flowers at the base of the stem to encourage repeat blooms. A regular watering regime is important throughout the summer months, but to keep those water bills in check, use rainwater by installing water bus in your garden. They're essential when there's a hosepipe ban. Water your plants in the morning or at dusk when there's less chance of water evaporation. With new growth and swelling crops, it's important that you tie in your plants. This will keep them secure and prevent any damage. Finally, summer won't be here forever, so get out there and enjoy it. Well, that's about it from me. But before I go, I know what you're thinking. Where's the item? Who's on the wall? Now, who's on the wall is when we take an individual, we place them on the wall and we talk about them. However, the shed's a bit of a mess at the moment, so we're gonna do things differently this month. We're not gonna talk about an individual. We're gonna talk about a group of people. Bloggers, vloggers, podcasters. They're out there. They are part of the garden industry. They have so much knowledge, so let's celebrate them. I've been lucky enough to work with some of them. Um, some of them have become friends, and some of them we just simply admire. So if you're new to gardening, I strongly urge you to check out these guys and girls because they are fantastic. They have a wealth of knowledge and they're just too happy to help you and talk about gardening. What could be better than that? So keep watching this and I will see you next time. Bye bye. If I sing you a song, would you all sing along? It could help you.